So why would people choose DNR? That is, do not resuscitate. Why would they refuse CPR? One of the ways it was phrased to me recently is, why wouldn't you want to be brought back if your body tried to die? So let's talk about it because there's a lot of emotions around this. There's a lot of conflicting things that we gotta kind of talk through. And we're gonna try and not be judgmental about the decisions that people make. And we're gonna try and just understand some of the situations that might make people think it's appropriate to label themselves as they do not resuscitate when they're going to the hospital. Okay, so when I think about why someone wouldn't choose to accept CPR, why they would want to be listed as a DNR, I think there's three things that kind of make sense to me. One is, do you think the thing that caused you to need resuscitation is survivable. The next one is, do you think you could survive CPR itself? And then if you manage to survive the thing that made you need CPR and you manage to survive the CPR, is what you're coming back to something that you view worth coming back to from a medical standpoint? So let's kind of break those down. First, I think that the question is, would you be able to survive the thing that made you need resuscitation? If you are younger, you're middle aged, you don't have a lot of problems, you might not even have anything come in your life that would make you think you're due to need a resuscitation at some point and it would have been a surprise to you anyway, you're more likely to come out of that and be able to survive whatever it is that causes you to need resuscitation. If you're older and have a lot of significant medical problems, just straight up the odds that you're going to be able to come through whatever put you into a need for CPR, whatever caused your heart to have problems, the odds of you getting recovered from that are just much lower. Okay, so this next one is, could you actually survive the process of CPR? And this one could be a little rough for some folks to hear. So if you think that this might be an emotional topic for you, go ahead and just hit pause or watch something else. But I need to explain very clearly that CPR is a very physical and violent process. Okay, but what CPR is that you see on TV is rarely accurate or indicative of what you go through. Uh, CPR really is simple as this. It is a bunch of people pushing very, very hard on your rib cage, hard enough that your rib cage compresses enough to push your heart hard enough that you can actually force blood through the rest of your body when your heart isn't doing it on its own. And that is not a soft and gentle process. That is a thing that I, mean, I don't have the actual statistics, but I don't know that I remember any long CPR process that I've been a part of that didn't end up with some broken ribs. Um, it is physically difficult to just survive CPR. If it wasn't CPR and you saw somebody doing to a random stranger what CPR is, you would call the police because it is very significantly physically traumatic. It's just potentially less traumatic than having your heart stop. Okay, the next one, and this one is again, something that really leaves people to have their own individual value judgments. So I think it's important if you're talking to somebody about code status that you are not judgmental about their decisions because we all have different priorities in our lives and this one gets really personal. And the last kind of criteria that I think of, does it make sense for someone to want to choose to be do not resuscitate status is, is what you're coming back to if you manage to survive the thing that caused the need for CPR and you survive CPR is what you're coming back to something that you want to come back to. Um, and is that going through all that process worth it for you? Lots of folks have different opinions on this. Some folks I know have chosen DPR uh, to be DNR when they've started to have significant dementia and they've started to have issues recognizing people or remembering things. They didn't want to go through that. They've watched family members go through dementia. They don't want to go through that. So they'll, they'll list themselves as a DNR. I know folks who've done it when they've had significant cancer risk. They, they've got a, a diagnosis that you're probably going to die in the next six months or something. And they said, well, you know what? If my heart stops, I certainly don't want to have to go through all that process to just come back to face this known, you know, death timeline that I'm facing. So there's a lot of things that people can look at and say, I don't know if I want to go through all the process of CPR just to come back to that. And so I'm going to choose to make myself a DNR so that if my body dies, I will allow myself to die naturally without putting myself through all of the trauma of a CPR. So that might have created some questions, some comments, maybe helped you kind of unpack some emotions that you might have had around family member statuses or made you think about some things that you want to do. 
Uh, one of the things I really do suggest uh, is to, if you're going to make changes in status, please tell the family members who are closest to you that you've decided to change your status. I have met multiple family members who have been shocked that their family member had made a decision. And if you are listed as a DNR and something happens to you, it will be over before we have a chance to get a hold of your family and let them know. So I do think it is part of the um, processing of the fact that we all are going to face a death at some point to cope with that, to try and accept that it's going to come at some point and to allow your family members the chance to understand your wishes so that they don't feel that they don't have the chance to say the things to you that they want to say, to ask for the forgiveness, to tell you the love yous and to make sure that they know and have a part in your process of deciding things so that they are aware and are a part of that. Um, Go ahead and leave comments below if you have them, questions below if you have them. And if you've got some conversations you need to have with your physician or with your family, go ahead and have them now while you still can.